That is a cheetah. That is a white-tailed deer. Yeah, her name is Chai. Uh, unbeknown to me, there are white-tailed deer running up and down the jungle around here. I have no idea, so she showed up. So a farmer shot her mother, and when he went to collect the mother on the other side of the fence, um, there was Chai laying on the other side of the fence, and uh, she was just a baby, like she couldn't even stand up. When he approached her, she just shuddered. She couldn't even stand, so he wrapped her up in a blanket and rushed her here. So Chai is a, an example of another permanent resident that's going to be here, because she can never be introduced to the wild. Um, a foreign a foreign fawn will never be taken on by a deer. So she'll be here this day. She plays around here in the morning with the monkeys, and then in the evenings um, runs around all afternoon harassing the horses. <laughs> yeah. So all of the monkeys inside this cage here are howler monkeys. Now all the ones that are in here are anywhere between the ages of six months and a year and a half. That's the oldest one that we have at the moment. Um, these guys here will not be eligible to be released until they reach the two and a half year mark uh, or three year mark. They will not be full size or develop for more. Guys, we know most of them have another year to go at least before they leave this place. So they're going to be dedicated that much time to the capital. So um, just behind me, I'm going to ask you guys to not cross anywhere past me. These guys uh, have a real problem with stress. Uh, getting in their face. Or Please definitely check your flash. If you flash this animal, it could mean it's life. These guys, when they stress, their immune system drops almost instantly and they may not wake up tomorrow morning. So there's please no, no getting in their faces and no screaming in their faces, please. Um, these are sloths. There are two kinds right here behind me. Um, on the ground right here rolling along is uh, Frankie. So there's two different types of sloths here in the country. There are two-toed sloths and there are three-toed sloths. Uh, the easiest way to tell them apart out in the wild is the coloration of their fur. Two-toed sloths are always some variation of brown or light brown. The three-toed sloths have the black, white, and gray striking on them. So that's the easiest way to tell them. If you see kind of a darker sloth up there, it's usually a three-toed sloth. The brown ones are really easy to spot because they're just brown fur. Now the brown ones have only two hooks on the front, on the front paw. The other ones have three. They both have three on the back paws. Now, um, they both have four different stomachs. So they digest food uh, pretty much all day long. And then when they're done doing that, they sleep. They sleep between 14 and 16 hours every day, most of them. Now, the, the two-toed <coughs> ones, the brown one right here on the ground, which is really very you won't probably ever see it on the ground. Um, these guys have triangular, pretty big teeth, triangular shape. So they can eat berries, um, fruits, um, all kinds of different leaves and stems, and then even some beetles and things like that. Um, the three-toed spots, grizzly over here, has really short, really flat teeth. So they're only limited to just leaves and then some really thin, small stems. So they're strictly vegetarian. Mm -hmm. These two-toed spots are a little bit further in there. They also have um, nine vertebrae in their neck as opposed to the three-toed spot that only has six. So these guys right here can be climbing up a tree, fold their head backwards, and then fold their head all the way down. I mean, they can touch the back of their skull to their spine and look straight down, upside down. Now they have this flexibility and mobility and also the skills to be very quiet because these animals solely depend on being camouflaged as their livelihood and defense. Now you can see, um, that's like, that's slow speed. You know, so against a dog or a cat or a hawk or anything like that, uh, these guys are pretty defensive. So uh, they solely depend on not being spotted. Also, they have this instinctive thing, which is kind of strange, but it makes sense. These guys live high up in the trees. Now, they will come down two or three times a week all the way to the base of a tree to go to the bathroom. They do that instinctively, like I said, because if they leave their droppings all over the tree limbs, their primary threat normally is wild cats. So the wild cats can track their migration pattern and then wait for them to come back around. So they go all the way to the base of the tree, which nowadays puts them really at risk for dogs. <laughs> Tower lions and dogs is really their biggest problem. Uh, we get a lot of sloths here that have exploded hands, um, that have severe burn to either side of their body because they caught on fire from touching a power line. A lot of times if they touch a low voltage cable, uh, it can be even worse because they'll touch it, they'll get knocked unconscious and fall. So we get a lot of back broken ribs, a lot of broken arms that they land on and things of this nature. Um, if they get, if they do, if a dog does catch up to one of these guys, um, nine times out of ten they end up here at the center and die that night. Or night. It's really rare to have a uh, 
surviving slot on the bottom. Careful, not there. Not there. No, no, no. Yeah. If you guys want, you can come over here and get a little bit closer look at these guys. Um, please just stay like where you are. Don't get in their face or anything. I'm going to go inside and get a couple of the monkeys. And then we'll come back outside here to the yard area and you guys can see the next place. Please um, follow me this way. It's a little easier if we do this out in the open. Right? 